We begin with the Democracy Now! Global Broadcast Exclusive. The City University of New York has reversed a decision to block an honorary degree to the Pulitzer Prize-winning playwright and screenwriter Tony Kushner over his support for Palestinian human rights. CUNY's Board of Trustees had come under widespread criticism since voting to shelve the honor last week, after one member cited Kushner's critical views of Israeli government policies. On Monday, the Board of Trustees Executive Committee convened a hastily arranged meeting to overturn its initial decision. The move followed a storm of criticism and protest. Past recipients, including the authors Barbara Ehrenreich and Michael Cunningham, announced they would return their honorary degrees to CUNY in solidarity with Kushner. Even former New York Mayor Edward Koch, known for his support of Israeli government policies, called on CUNY to reverse its decision and said he thinks the trustee who led the campaign against Kushner should resign. The trustee, Jeffrey Weisenfeld, was absent for Monday's vote. In an interview with The New York Times, Weisenfeld criticized a reporter for suggesting, quote, a moral equivalence between Palestinians and Israelis. Weisenfeld said, people who worship death for their children are not human. The Palestinians have developed a culture which is unprecedented in human history. Well, in a Democracy Now! broadcast exclusive, I'm joined now by Tony Kushner, renowned playwright and screenwriter. He won a Pulitzer Prize and a Tony Award for his play Angels in America, which was later made into an award-winning television miniseries. His latest play is called The Intelligent Homosexual's Guide to Capitalism and Socialism with a Key to the Scripture. It's just opened at the Public Theater here in New York City. We welcome you, Tony Kushner, to Democracy Now! It's nice to be here. Your reaction to the reversal of the board's decision that shelved your honorary degree? Well, I'm, I'm very uh, pleased that they did it. I think it's the appropriate thing to do. Um, I think it's important to point out that it's the direct and even exclusive consequence of the protest that was mounted by the com CUNY community and uh, academic community all over the United States, um, and, and many, many uh, people who are concerned with uh, freedom of expression and uh, the open exchange of ideas. And, uh, and I think the board did the right thing in reversing their decision. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy about it, and I'm happy that I'm uh, going to accept uh, uh, the degree and be at the uh, John Jay commencement on June 3rd. How did you hear that the board had reversed this decision? Uh, my husband actually uh, went to the. I had to go give a speech uh, at the Rubin Museum. Um, uh, a friend of mine, Nancy Hatch Dupree, who is a, an Afghan uh, uh, specialist and who has lived in Afghanistan for many years, was getting an award. So I went to uh, be part of the ceremony. And meanwhile, my husband Mark uh, went to the public meeting at uh, CUNY and walked right in and watched, and then texted me after it was over and said, "It's over." And they. Uh, uh, gave you the degree. I wanted to make sure that uh, there were no um, advisory warnings or footnotes attached to the degree. I said that I would accept it only if uh, it was given with exactly the same um, graciousness and generosity that all other honorary degrees were conferred. I didn't want mine to be a sort of special case. Can you? Step back for a minute and explain exactly what happened. You were called by John Jay College, one of the City University yes. of New York colleges, and asked if you would accept this honorary degree. Right. Uh, Jeremy Travis, the president, contacted me the way this usually happens uh, and said, would you accept this? This was about two or three months ago. And I said yes. Um, and. Uh, then I had actually no idea that the board was. Uh, I assumed the board would meet at some point and approve honorary degrees. That's usually what happens. I had no idea that the board was meeting last Tuesday night, I think. And uh, I got an email uh, Tuesday night from Jeremy Travis saying, I'm sorry to tell you this, but your nomination has been tabled. Would you call me in the morning and we'll discuss it? And then uh, that's when it all started. And explain what you were told, what you understood happened. Did you view the board meeting online? I've never been able to get the CUNY TV link to work, but I listened to the podcast, which is, I think, still available. And uh, it's an hour and 10 minute uh, long meeting. And at the very end, uh, there's a sort of, uh, you can't exactly tell who's t talking, but I think it's Benno Schmidt. Uh, there's a. Um, 
Ben O'Schmidt is, is the, the chair of the board of trustees, of former, trustees head of former head of Yale University. Yale, yes, and a constitutional law scholar. Head uh, former head of Columbia Law School. Yes. Uh, so uh, this is this very strange uh, thing. He says that we've got all these honorary degree candidates. Let's approve the slate, which is apparently what's happened automatically every time for at least since the early 1960s. And, uh, and then Jeffrey Weisenfeld says that he wants to make a statement, uh, and uh, he's a trustee, uh, a Pataki appointee, and a former fixer, I gather, for Alphonse D'Amato. And uh, uh, he, uh, he uh, stands up and makes a very odd speech, the first uh, minute or so of which is devoted to uh, trashing Mary Robinson, uh, the former president of Ireland. In, uh, High Commissioner for Human Rights for the UN, uh, and and then proceeds to talk about the fact that I've been quoted on Norman Finkelstein's blog, although I actually have no association and have never met or even visited Norman Finkelstein's website, uh, and then quotes the two or three quotes of mine that uh, right wing. Um, ostensible defenders of Israel always quote taken out of context, uh, and um, uh, and then there's a sort of a scramble. Uh, as I counted, eight members of the board. I, I understand that it may have only been seven members of the board voted to just approve the whole slate. I wanted to turn to the CUNY trustee, Jeffrey Weisenfeld, who led the effort um, against you, against Tony Kushner. This is some of what he said. The effort is a little uh, much. He really just got up and made a ad, you know, an ad hoc speech. He didn't do much in the way. Well, let me play a clip of uh, what Jeffrey Weisenfeld said um, before the board voted um, to shelve Tony Kushner's honorary degree. There is uh, a lot of disingenuous and non-intellectual activity directed against uh, the State of Israel on campuses throughout the country, uh, the West generally, and oftentimes the United States as well. And the reason I choose to address this, there have been a couple of instances, and I don't in any way, God forbid, denigrate this university because we are far and away better in this regard than most others. Uh, and certainly not the college in question, but I want to address in context the question of the granting of the degree to Tony Kushner. I chose with Mr. Kushner not to look at pro-Israel websites that would give insight into his feelings of Israel. Rather, I went to the website of one Norman Finkelstein, another discredited individual uh, that mercifully we rid ourselves of at this university, and he pridefully displays key quotes of Mr. Kushner on his website, which are accurately reflected elsewhere and by Mr. Kushner's record itself. And I quote Mr. Kushner. First, uh, why Mr. Finkelstein praises the candidate. Kushner also deplores the brutal and illegal tactics of the IDF, which I might add is uh, the only force of its kind in the world that has the high code of ethics that the Israel Defense Forces has. And he, del and he deliberate, the deliberate destruction of Palestinian culture in a systematic attempt to destroy the identity of the Palestinian people. He is also on the board of an organization which opposes the security fence, a unified Jerusalem, or military aid to Israel, recommends uh, Norman Finkelstein's notorious uh, books, and supports boycotting and divesting from the state of Israel. Now to Mr. Kushner's quotes. Israel was founded in a program that, if you really want to be blunt about it, was ethnic cleansing and that today is behaving abominably towards the Palestinian people. I've never been a Zionist. I have a problem with the idea of a Jewish state. It would be better if it never had happened. Kushner said establishing a state means F-U- ING people over. However, I think that people in the late 20th and 21st century, having seen the Holocaust, having seen the 20th century and all of its horrors, cannot be complacent in the face of that. The Howard's reporter, uh, the Israeli reporter uh, questioning Mr. Kushner says, uh, but you are saying then that the very creation of the state of Israel as a Jewish state was not a good idea. And Mr. Kushner answered it was a mistake. I think you get the idea. I don't want to, to bore you all with the details. That was Jeffrey Weisenfeld, uh, the CUNY trustee um, who gave this speech before the board voted, for the first time in its history, to shelve an honorary degree. Uh, Tony Kushner with us, your response. 
Oh my God! I mean, I, you know, I've, I wrote a letter that's available online, uh, responding directly to some of what he said. I, I don't really think that this is a, an appropriate, uh, or certainly the board meeting and and Weisenfeld's remarks are not an occasion for me to uh, to engage in a in a debate with this guy about uh, the state of Israel. Everything that he says is taken out of context. Um, I think it's really shocking that he says to the board, I'm not going to bore you with the details, as if the consideration of whether or not somebody is worthy of an honorary degree is not worthy of, you know, being, quote, unquote, bored with details. And, of course, what he's doing is sparing them not boring details, but uh, the, the full extent of the things that I've said about the state of Israel that would, in fact, make it clear to the board that I am in no way uh, an enemy of the state of Israel, uh, that I am, in fact, a vocal uh, and ardent and supporter of the state of Israel, but I don't believe that criticism of state policy means that one uh, seeks the destruction uh, of a state. I've been very critical of the policies of my own government, and I think, in fact, uh, adults should be uh, critical um, uh, of uh, when they look at reality. That's sort of the job of being an adult. Um, I think it's amazing that no one on the board asked to see the full interview that he's quoting from Haaretz or anything else that I've written. It's also interesting that he says that he chose not to go to pro-Israeli websites, which is a term that I have a lot of problems with, uh, because it's, you're, I don't think pro-Israeli or anti-Israeli is, you know, uh, really a grown-up way to talk about these things. But he says, I can't go to pro-Israeli websites, so I turned to normal, Norman Finkelstein's website. It's like, well, you know, there's a third option. You could look at what I've read, written and what I've actually said. Uh, you could turn to the work that I've done, for which I'm ostensibly being, you know, honored. Uh, that doesn't seem to have occurred to him or to anybody else on the board as a, as a legitimate thing. And, you know, he prepared no one for this. No one was told that it was going to happen. Uh, I certainly wasn't told. So it was a, a chance for him to get up and say whatever he wanted uh, without uh, uh, anyone there to uh, uh, respond, and, and no one on the board did. I wanted to bring up Christopher Peterson Overton. He is another person who faced a smear campaign for his views on Israel. Um, uh, he was going to be teaching at Brooklyn College. Right. He ultimately is, yes. because of the same kind of response that you got. But he wrote recently, responding to the reversal of the decision in your case, Tony Kushner, Three months ago, I found myself at the center of a similar controversy over my appointment to teach a course in Middle East politics at Brooklyn College, a CUNY school. Lacking any evidence to support the charge, a local politician described me as pro-suicide bomber press for my dismissal within 48 hours and before I had held a single session of the course, the college administration intervened to cancel my appointment. My case set off a groundswell of support from academics and activists around the world, and Brooklyn College eventually reinstated me just in time for classes to begin. Let's talk about the groundswell of support and the response, the backlash. Did you expect that? No, I mean, not at all. I, I um, wasn't sure at first. I mean, I had uh, uh, some uh, uncertainty as to whether or not this would even become a news story. It was picked up initially by a small paper, The Jewish Week. Uh, in a rather inaccurate news uh, account of it, that they had, didn't call me to ask me for my response. Uh, then that got picked up by a couple of—I think the Forward picked it up and the Jewish Chronicle in Britain. And then from that point, it, it became—at that point, I sat down and wrote a letter to the Board of Trustees uh, explaining to them um, my position on this and what I felt that they had uh, done wrong. Um, uh, I had no idea. I think no one had any idea. I mean, I, I've been thinking uh, in the last few days about what it must have felt like for the board. I think that they all went home from the podcast. It sounds like they sort of shrug their shoulders and go home, uh, imagining that their business was done and that this was all over. And I think it seems to me uh, that, uh, given the fact that none of them responded <laughs> Uh, for, for several days, that, that they were really uh, caught off guard. And Mr. Weisenfeld, um, who has since this meeting called me, uh, uh, basically said that I was an anti-Semite, that I was guilty of blood libel against the Jewish people, that I, that I was a capo, uh, seems to think that if he keeps you know, ringing the same bell louder and louder, it'll eventually get the response he hopes it'll get. And he, I think he seems sort of confused. He now has a spokesman. Uh, which is a kind of an amusing development. He's not speaking directly to the press, as far as I can tell.